Hello everyone, it's Tom Smith here of Blue Diamond Filmmakers, and I just wanted to make a quick video um, about, well, the armory of Blue Diamond. Um, I was inspired by Foxway Studios, they did a similar video on their channel, Foxway Extras. And I was like, you know, I've been thinking about that, because when we were making the Lost Scene 5, I was looking at some of our weapons and like, we've had some of these since the Price of Loyalty. A lot of the ones we had during the Price of Loyalty days, though, are lost. Uh, we start out, I think we had two Glocks, an AK-47, a broken MP5, I think that was all we had, and maybe a shotgun, but I think that's all we had to start off with, and we had to kind of make it work. No, we had the machine gun, we had a broken machine gun as well. That's all we had. Yeah, those five. I remember we started off with just five. Then when Sean got on board, we got a bunch more and stuff like that. So over the years we've built up quite a bit of a collection. We've lost a few, a few have been broken. Um, but most of the time, you know, we go for, a lot of them are plastic. You know, they're not the most durable, uh, but they're cheaper to buy. And sometimes we've been very careful with some of our nicer ones, like, well, the Walther PPK. Um, in my gas blowback one. In fact, the one shot where it goes flying, we use a different pistol. So, you know, sometimes we've actually had stun doubles for the weapons. But, I thought I'd go through them, discuss them, and kind of figure out where we were when uh, we made them, stuff like that. There might be some jump cuts in here because I'm trying to sort through all the weapons here, so bear with me. But I really just want to show you what we've got. So, I will start off with... Um, let's just start off with this. So this is an AK-74. Uh, so she got, um, it's appeared a few times. I know we had it at least by time of uh, 2012 when we were filming uh, the Lost mm, 3. Yeah, the Lost Scene 3. We were filming that. We uh, had this. Um, Sean Deakins uses it in Lost Scene 5, but I use it as one of my guards. It's uh, gotten around a little bit here and there. We haven't used it a whole lot, but it's pretty nice. It's a nice metal. One, I gave it a strap, and they have a nice, you know, it's got a nice feel to it. Looks good, looks good on the camera. Also, uh, note for using my guns. Uh, so, what we do, because while well, here in the States, uh, I'm running around with guns with uh, the orange tips on them. And get us in a lot of trouble, and it. it almost has nearly a few times. Uh, so what we do is we put electrical tape around it, and we can just peel that off whenever we need to. That way we don't get in any trouble. We've also been just working on just filming in remote locations, hence why the major action sequence in the Lost Scene Five was filmed on just some farmland. It's a good way to just kind of get out and not get in any trouble. Our first few films we didn't even do the electrical tape thing; we just left a bunch of tips on it because you know. People freak out about that sort of thing. So, just a minor little thing. And we use a marker or whatever to get the rest of it that the electrical tape can get. But this looks pretty good. Pretty good uh, AK-74. Uh, let's see. Ah, my personal favorite. The MP5. We've had this one for 2011. I think I got it in 2010. Yeah, I got it right after we filmed the Shower of Revenge. We had a different one when we filmed the Shower of Revenge, Sean's. It had the double uh, clip, so there was the clip that was connected to it, so you could just swap them out and everything. It looked really cool. I really loved using that. Sean, I think, got stolen. He did get a bunch of his stolen from him. And his got stolen, so I was like, okay, um, I saw this one available to buy. A lot of stuff I bought from like Dick Sporting Goods, MC Sports, a lot of sporting goods stores. A few of them I bought online. But for the most part, that's where I got a lot of these. I uh, saw this and was like, oh good, we can finally have an MP5. I just really like the way the MP5 you know, feels. Also, it just looks really good. The electrical tape worked perfectly on it. It's just one of our best looking weapons and I like it and use it. I got a chance to use it in Lost in 5 as the um, well, the decked guy, he primarily uses this sort of weapon. I mean, we've had many people use it. I mean, of course, Sam uh, and the Survivor for a brief time had this as well. Uh, first place I remember it's using it though was the Lost Scene. 
the lost scene uh, one, which made sense because I mean, this is the weapon of in the 80s and the 90s. I mean, this was the machine gun that almost everyone used. So, to me, makes sense. You know, this is some machine gun here. Um, let's see. Got an M4. Uh, it's been used a little bit. It's got a little mount. It has a little laser sight thing on it. It's a nice, uh, no, I'm sorry. It's an M4. This is a M16. Okay, if I, maybe an M4. <laughs> Some of these I'm not sure what the first one on. I mean, it's just, just good, good thing. And this one, we're just, we don't use this for much. I don't even remember when I got it, but we've had it. So I can't really say much on that. Uh, same with this one. This one's kind of nice because I like the, it's got the scope. Um, has the little laser pointer on the side, the little flashlight, the little flashlight. A lot of these don't have batteries anymore that work. Um, uh, but you know, I mean they look good still though. I know we use some of these in uh, Lost in Time and stuff. I mean they're, they're still good looking, like this good looking. Let's see if I can get a little light in here. There we go. That might help. You can see it a little better. Uh, but yeah. Oh. This one, the clip's weird because the clip is actually the battery for the airsoft. But, so it kind of wants to slip out. It's kind of tricky on that one. I'm always like, be very ginger with it. And then we'll have a scene where a clip falls out of the gun and that won't look good. Um, oh yes, M14. This is actually interesting because this one, this scope actually was, came with one of my shotguns. And I was like, I don't feel the reason why a shotgun needs a scope on it. So I was like, ah, it'll look a lot better if I can just attach it onto this. It'll make this look a lot better. So you know, you got the scope. We've used it in a few films. I know we've had, this, once again, this one, I know we had I think I got it early, late 2011 or early 2012 because they had it in the Lost Scene 3. Uh, one of my guards walking by, carrying this. Uh, of course, I used it in the Survivor um, War's End, is what Sam had as his main primary weapon. Uh, but yeah, I've enjoyed using it when we have. We just haven't used it a whole lot, but it's really. It's a pretty good looking one. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, AK-47, of course. Uh, haven't used it a whole lot. Uh, once again, Austin 3, first place I remember it popping up. I had it. Um, you see James carrying it at one point. It's gotten around a few other times. Not a whole lot. I'd really like to use it some more. I meant to use it in Austin 5, but I don't think anyone actually did use it. Um, still, it's a good one. I like having the one of them with having the wood. It's really nice. I mean, it's plastic, obviously, but it looks good. Um, so yeah, fortunately, one of the uh, strap pieces broke off, so you can't have the strap have a strap attached. This little D ring broke off. I might be able to put another one in there, though. Maybe, so that way we can put another strap on it. Now looking pretty good here, you know? Uh, ah, this one. This is interesting. So this is, of course, the Thompson submachine gun. You know, World War II era. Um, we did see Mark use it, I think the first time ever. I remember I got it, uh, I think it was December 2012. I got this. I remember I used it I, when one of my vlogs I was discussing. I actually took it out and was shooting it and just testing it out. Um, no, it's pretty good. I, Mark, I think, is the only person that's ever actually used it in one of our films. was actually one of his guards in Lost Scene 5 actually had this. Although it will be appearing in an upcoming film because we needed something that fit the time period. Not really going to say much more about that project. That's kind of a secret coming up. But. Um, yeah, I, I like it. It looks pretty good. 
Uh, also originally got it for another project that we just never made. Uh, an idea I had for a fantasy film which involves a guy going into a fantasy world, kind of like Lord of the Rings or something, he's like a World War II soldier. This was going to be his primary gun, and that's part of the reason why I got it. But that project just never went beyond the uh, initial script writing phase. So, you know, got that. Um, okay, this one I need to fix because the button has been broken off. It was broken off while we were making the scene 5. This is the really cool uh, M4 with underbarrel shotgun, which is really cool. It's cool having those little, you know, just having the underbarrels so you can jump in back. But unfortunately, when I was doing my fight with Richard, where we were kind of fighting, it kind of surprised me. We filmed it multiple times and Eventually, it just kind of broke off. I think the scope got a little bit damaged too, so we've had some uh, some issues with this. But it's a really nice one. That's why I'm gonna do what I can to get the butt end fixed back on here because it looks really cool. I really like it. It's gotten a, it's gotten a couple things here and there. Um, ah. We've had this P90 since the Price of Loyalty. This is one of our few been around since the Price of Loyalty days. So, really cool in that. Uh, this is my brother's favorite. Uh, so, machine gun. We used to have two. They also used to have scope and light attachments. In fact, in one of the outtakes of the Shadow Revenge, you can actually see my novel. He's um, he's got he's dual wielding them, and he slips, and he kind of whacks the ground. And then when we actually film that, and then when you see the scene in the actual movie, he only has one. The reason why was because he broke a piece off of one when he slipped. Like I said, I mean, I like the fact that this gun, you know, you can, it's, you know, you can use it in the left hand, it looks, feels good, and you can use it in the right, it feels good. P90 is a great gun. My brother always calls it, he calls it the Stargate gun, because that's what they're primarily using. Stargate SG-1, Stargate Atlantis, you know, I mean, I know they started with the MP5 and SG-1, but they switched over to the P90 about season 4, I think. Maybe we're going to go against Unas, but that's just me nerding out. But yeah, you can actually see this, uh, Richard uses it in one scene in The Price of Loyalty. So we've had this since 2007. That's a long time. So, one of our earliest guns. Right there. Too much on this here. It's a pile. Uh, shotgun. It's a nice little barrel shotgun. I think this is the one that had the scope that I'm using on the important. It's just a nice little shotgun here. Nothing too special. It's just longer than the uh, other shotgun I've got. So, cool stuff with this. Uh, let's see. A nice uh, M4 A1 carbine. Uh, nice and light, uh, pretty sturdy. Take a lot to break this thing, but it's, I mean, it, to me, this is one of my most standard. If you need to just, here, have them, have them, have them, have an assault rifle, I'll just hand you this. It's like just really easy. I don't, what's that? <laughs> Strap on here. I'll just find when that happens. There we go. And then, you know, you got a nice strap for it, and yeah, clip comes out easy, goes back in easily, uh, pull back the front. It's just basic, standard weapon that we can use. Uh, let's see. Ah, yes, our smaller shotgun. Uh, seen it, I've used it multiple times in different films we've seen this use. A lot of people like to grab this one. When I'm like, hey, pick a weapon. This gets picked up quite a bit. Mm -hmm. This is that nice, you know, you just got it and just, you know. You know just, I like the idea of yeah, you just grab it and you just gotta go shoot, shoot. And then fire it. But of course, the, a lot of these are spring loaded. You know, shotguns and the, or electric, uh, most of these. Uh, so you got that. Almost through here. Oh yes, 
then you got this one. So you can see the bullets inside there. Uh, I remember there was one scene where, <laughs> this is the uh, next gun I'm going to talk about. Yeah, he's like, T36 is the commander. T36. Uh, we've seen this get used a, a little bit here and there. And the stock's a little bent on this end. But um, Dan uh, used it a little bit in all scene 5, I remember that. Uh, G36, of course, uh, love it, uh, this is a great one, uh, this is a nice metal one, um, it's actually got metal to it, so this is one of the more expensive ones I got, so it's pretty sturdy, uh, once again, another great one to hand people and say, hey, use it, I know we've had it since 2012, because we had it in the, uh, training exercise sequence of The Lost Scene 3, I used it there. Um, as well as later on in the film when I uh, kill the leather jacket guy after he kills uh, Sean. Uh, I don't know if we'd actually use this one in any of our films yet. Honestly. I think this is an AUG. Um, but I don't think we've actually used this one. I, I think it just, most people are just look at it and just like, uh, I don't know. Because <laughs> it's a more unique looking weapon. Um, I'd like to use it. I think we just, I don't know if anyone has. I can't recall in my films if anyone uses this, but it's a nice, a nice thing. You can just kind of care about it. I think it looks good. It's a pretty good looking one. Um, but yeah, I don't think we've actually used it. And last but not least, when it comes to our larger rifles, another classic. I don't think we had this in the price of relative, I know we had in the shower revenge. This is Daniel Banks's AK-47. Fortunately, the stock no longer exists on it. I And the clip was missing, too, when uh, Sean gave me this, because he gave me all his airsoft guns and kept his real ones, obviously, that we use. Um, but I had a spare clip for my AK-74, and it fit perfectly in there. If I just load it up. It does fit. <laughs> There, yeah. It fits, so I was like, okay, we can use this again now. So we actually got a clip on it, and I did use it. Uh, and I lost scene five and stuff like that. But it's, it's really good. It's nice metal. It's a nice, um, nice metal one. Nice and kind of expensive. <laughs> to, I know it cost me a little bit, so it's kind of nice that I still get to use it. it looks really good. That's why I took the uh, orange tip off of this one. So we got to be real careful when we use this. <laughs> But it's pretty good. I mean, the only downside is no stock. Uh, but it still looks good. I like using it. The other AK is pretty good too, so it's nice to have a couple AK-47s for filming purposes. Uh, now let's go into the bag. Let's start looking at the small arms. Uh, we also get to some of the you could say cheaper stuff, uh, and we'll do that in just a second here. Okay, and we're back. I was just having to grab a couple of guns that I've got kind of on display in the apartment here. Of course, we'll just start off with this. Walder PPK. I only know of three men who carry such a gun, and I believe I've killed two of them. Uh, <laughs> Uh, of course, it's the James Bond gun. I've had it since 2012. Got it for making the Reflection of the Soul. Of course, it'll be using that forever if we get to make it. It's a gas blowback. Uh, airsoft gun. You know, of course, it came with silencer. Nice case, as you've seen in, like, uh, Pain of Regret. That's the case it came in. Um, but, yeah, and also in Reflection of the Soul, I guess you see the case there, too. Uh, just a nice case. Great quality. It's just really solid. Uh, on their PPKS. Yeah, pretty good. This is uh, from uh, Maruzen. Uh, they always want to know because I've had a few people ask me. Uh, but I really like it. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll talk about this one. This is one more unique. Um, this is the R Death Ray uh, prop from Boom. Uh, that would be my wife Brandy's. Uh, piled episode for her um, superhero short is what the uh, doctor uses in the end part. Can't remember if it's post credit or 
actual film. But yeah, he uses this death ray. It's just a Nerf gun that was painted up. Really nice. Uh, let's see, what's we got in here? We got uh, this old style. This was actually gonna be used for uh, Rough Justice. We're actually gonna have um, a character in Rough Justice using this. Old style uh, German pistol. Uh, early 1900s, so we thought it fit with the aesthetic. Uh, I'm gonna kind of go through these really fast. We never really used this. This came with the shotgun, one of the shotguns. Never really used it. Uh, we have it. Uh, we have a machine pistol. Of course, this one's still. I didn't even put the tip back on it. We got the orange tip. Uh, nice little machine pistol there. Like I said, I'm gonna be going through this pretty f here. This is the old ray gun from uh, the Survivor. It no longer has the uh, alien writing on it, but this is it. Uh, nice little, just, uh, just a pellet gun. And uh, then just dressed it up with all the stuff. Uh, Sam's pistol from the Survivor. That, well, it started out as Chris's pistol, but then Sam had it. Uh, and the uh, start out as, um, this has been uh, also Niven's main pistol. I mean, we've also seen him with the uh, other one, the... Uh, yeah, here it is. The 1911 is another one. These are probably my two favorite pistols that I personally, when I personally make films. Actually, I have three. I have three that I really like using. really like using this one. This is kind of Colt 45. I think that's what it is. Uh, this Colt Double Eagle. Uh, of course, the uh, M1911. Really good. really like using those. Uh, I'll find in here another one. Like I said, just got a bunch of random pistols in here. Let's see. Uh, Walt, um, Walter Sinclair used this one in uh, Profession of the Soul. So there. This got a ton of pistols. I mean, that's really throughout. Here's the stump pistol for the for the wall there. Um, this is another one that we've had for a long time because um. We had this in the Shower of Revenge, because this is what um, Caleb Denton and Miranda Bennett, and Caleb Denton's character, used. Um, Chris Mooney recently used it, and Mark Bollinger. So we've had this one around for a while. It, but it, it looked enough like the Walter PPK that I used it as a, for any of the stunt shots, because it's nice plastic. Oh, I forgot I did have a few submachine guns in here. Of course, the uh, MP5K. Which is kind of cool because it's got, um, there are attachments, there's a scope attachment, a butt attachment, and a silencer, so, like, this is just it without any of the attachments on it, but, like, you see it, like, in even Lost Scene 5, I'm using all of it, and also the Lost Scene 3, um, but, yeah, when you pull the attachments, but you can also just hold it like this, just have it, it's kind of cool being able to pull the attachments on it. Nice MP5K. Ah, uh, yes. Walter P99. I've had this since the price loyalty days, too. It's the Walter. Uh, and uh, this one broke. It originally had, you know, the thing where you could put the silencer on it. But when this one broke, I continued to use this. And you do see it occasionally. You know, you see it in person like Shadow Bench and stuff like that. So... Gotta like the Walder. P99. Uh, uh, okay, uh, Beretta M9. Standard stuff. Uh, got a nice little easy machine gun. Nice little kind of like Uzi. You know, nice. Basic. Ah, oh, yeah, here's the other one I really like using the Beretta M9. This one of our Beretta M9. Yeah, so those are my three favorites. Uh, this is the one I used uh, in uh, Lost Scene 3 when I shot and emptied the clip into Andrew Livingston, Edward Niven does. This is the one. So those are my three main pistols. I really like using the one I used in Survivor, this one, and also, and of course the PPK and the P99 are really cool. Uh, this was our electric, yeah, P30. I uh, used it briefly in uh, in the lost scene three, uh, when I come down the hill to kill the guard before 
I'm fighting uh, Andrew Livingston. I use I use this to start off the fight. Ah, uh, oh yes, here's the P99 with the silencer attached to it. Because we had two of them. I think we had three originally. No, we only had the two. So this is it with the silencer. Really cool. <laughs> Makes you feel like being formed, you know? It's a good gun. Good gun. <laughs> And of course we got a bunch of attachments in here. Another one of those shotgun pistol, uh, pistols that came with the shotgun, I should say. And one of those random ones, I really use that. Uh, of course, the mm, nice revolver pistol is what I'm using with Indiana Jones. Stuff like that. Also, it might be appearing in that uh, little Sin project that I was talking about with the uh, Thompson. Uh, not much more about that, but uh, just putting in the holster I use for martial law. Um, let's see. Uh, another one. Oh yeah, I've got two Berettas. I know I've got another one that's also got this, so... Oh yeah, here they are. These are the dual wield. Same kind of pistol. I am... Uh, Sean Deacons. I know I used at least one of these in his films, because you get nice, uh, nice laser scope. I don't want to point it directly at the camera, but you can't really see it. But, point a laser pointer. I don't know how well you can see that. But yeah, so it's kind of cool that they work. Nice little laser pointers. Uh, oh yeah, the, uh, MP7. Really like using this one. Something you got. Had it since it been using it since the Shadow of Revenge. So I remember using it in that warehouse scene. So that's the other another pistol with a dot laser pointer around me in the show. Uh, Uzi the nine millimeter. So Uzi really haven't used it. It's kind of too small. It's not really that realistic. But, you know, it's a nice little, if we need this, have some cheap props. Out. <laughs> Just another pistol. Got a ton of pistols. And another. <laughs> Here's the butt end attachment for the MP5K. Uh, if I can find it in here, it's somewhere in this pile. I don't really want to pick through. And it's got a lot of attachments and stuff, like silencers and stuff like that. The P90 can have a silencer, the uh, MP5K, a bunch of that. I uh, have this odd pistol here. Never really used it for much. Uh, used it in one scene in the um, the uh, Price Loyalty Special Edition on Bond's Game Ready for the Card Game. I actually did use this pistol, and that's never really appeared. It was just kind of an easy keep buy for a little pistol. Uh, I think that might be all of them. I think everything else in here is just uh, holsters and stuff. So yeah, yeah, that's it. That's the whole collection right there. Um, yeah, that's Blue Diamond's armory for you right there. Oh, uh, I don't think this is actually technically part of the Blue Diamond armory. Uh, or is it? You saw nothing. So yeah, that's that's the armory. Um, probably the uh, the PPK is probably my favorite of all this, this entire collection. Uh, I also really like the MP5. The yeah, hit the iron, yeah. And definitely got the M1911 Sam Russell's 45. Really cool. Um, but yeah, I do like this revolver. It's gonna be fun to use it in Indiana Jones uh, and other projects. You know, it's cool to see. You can actually even take out and comes with a little pop of bullets. So you can even do this. Sorry, that. You can even unload it. It's fun. 
Uh, but we've, uh, of course, we've lost a lot of pistols along the way. Uh, we had like shotguns. You remember that, like the green camo shotgun, the blue uh, AK-47 stuff from the Price of Loyalty. Of course, those Glock, all the original props we no longer have. The ones that we originally originally started off with in the Price of Loyalty we no longer have. We have a handful from that did survive, like the P99 and the uh, P90. Remember, I like the only ones that really survived all the way through to now, so yeah, like really, like, like these really are our two survivors, two longest running survivors right here. Had a few from the Revenge. Pretty much everything though from like 2011 onwards we've had for a while. So we've done good at keeping stuff since then, but of course those early days, so much stuff during those early days went on and we weren't as good at keeping track of all our stuff. Plus we had all our stuff kind of divided. I had some stuff, Richard had some stuff, Sean had some stuff, so we were like all over the place with these. Um, but yeah, and then of course there's the real guns that we've used. We've used a handful of real guns. I think the only real guns that we've used, uh, the first real guns we ever used were in Shower Revenge during the scene when I uh, Bond's going up against Ivanov and threatening to kill him and stuff. And you know he's like you know get on your knees and all that. Um, during that scene, the gun I get, I take away from him was a real one, and the one that the guard runs into that I knock over the head, those were real. Those were. Rich Denton's guns, we were using his house, and he offered it. But his real guns. Uh, outside of that, um, the, uh, the little 22 caliber revolver I used in uh, Martial Law 3, and it was in Reflection of the Soul, and it, you know, it got into a couple films. That was my real 22 revolver pistol I no longer own. I sold it. Um, but that one was real. We also had a few, we had a real shotgun and a real pistol used also in, um, the Hatchie had fired blanks and a couple of shots in, uh, Martial Law 3, and of course all the Martial Law props I can't speak on, a lot of that stuff Patrick Stark would have to be able to tell you more about, so like the really cool steampunk weapons, yeah I can't really speak much on that. The, we lost the, uh, other survivor weapons, like the main rifle and stuff, we lost those. Stuff's been lost over the years, but I know this is kind of a long video to talk about all this, but I thought I'd kind of show you um, what we have and just uh, really ask the questions, um, what's your favorite? What guns in this collection do you really like? What would you like to see us use more often? And what more different types would you like to see in the future? Um, I don't know how much we'll be getting. I mean, we've got a pretty good collection here. We've never had an issue with, we don't have any guns. Oh, I forgot to mention also with the real guns. We, of course, are Sean's. He had that 9mm uh, rifle. Also, he had the Moisten the Gant Russian rifle. Oh, that thing was awesome to fire. We used the gun range in the Lost Thing 3. Uh, and I think he also used it in, uh, yeah, he also used it in, uh, Fight for the Soul. But those ones were awesome as well. So, you know, he gave us his air sauce, but he kept the real ones. <laughs> but yeah, like, what would you like to see us use more often? Oh yeah, here we go. My three favorite pistols right here. Alright. Really like the way they feel. They just feel the best in the hands. But yeah, uh, I think that's it. Uh, yeah, what would you like to see us use more often? What would you like to see uh, us get and acquire? And lastly, what um, would you? Um, what was your, what's your favorite? What out of this do you really like? What ones look really good on camera? And uh, yeah, so uh, thanks for watching this video. Um, I will not have to put all this away and then uh, use it again in the next, our next film projects. So you'll be seeing more of these guns at some point. But yeah, this is a collection that's gone from 2007 all the way through 2021, where we're here right now. So 
14 years building up this collection. All right, so uh, I hope you enjoyed this little video, uh, and take care, guys. From all of us here at Blue Diamond Filming.